Hello, and welcome to a session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and our case today comes from the realm of uh, surgical pathology and gyne gynecologic pathology um, here on the campus at the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. Our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy. Uh, in this case, uh, the patient is an 18-year-old woman uh, who has an ovarian mass uh, that appears to have uh, spread intraperitoneally because she has a little bit of ascites and uh, uh, abnormal findings on exam uh, and on CT scan. So uh, what are our considerations when this person comes to uh, frozen section? Uh, and why would they do frozen section? Well, first of all, uh, they want to do uh, as little surgery as possible, but they also want to do enough surgery, uh, and the type of tumor is going to make a difference. So the role of frozen section in a young woman uh, is to primarily differentiate several different categories of uh, tumors. Uh, obviously, uh, the age group uh, determines likelihood of uh, many different tumors, and so most likely we uh, or we'd be more likely to be dealing with some of the germ cell neoplasms or sex cord uh, tumors than we would to be, say, a high-grade serous tumor. But some of the serous and epithelial tumors can also occur in young women. And then there are other tumors, uh, small cell carcinoma, hypercalcemic type, immature teratoma, and so forth, that might also have patterns of spread um, and implications for intraoperative and subsequent management. So frozen section has a high utility to the uh, surger, surgeon um, and uh, is uh, important in the uh, uh, staging and evaluation of uh, these patients. So here's a uh, <clears throat> representative section from the uh, omental tissue on this patient. Um, and, uh, you know, I have to admit that I first looked at this uh, not recognizing her age and thought, Gee, this looks like a high-grade uh, epithelial tumor. Um, you know, uh, what's going on? Uh, maybe you'll need to be thinking about a serous tumor or so forth. Uh, but, you know, in looking at this closer, when, the, when I realized how old the patient was, uh, I noticed immediately this sort of lacy uh, pattern uh, to the tumor. Uh, a lot of these microcystic spaces, uh, sieve-like spaces, not a cribriform uh, pattern, but a, a very delicate pattern. Uh, and clearly malignant cells, but not uh, um, not highly pleomorphic, fairly monotonous, <clears throat> uh, nuclei of reasonable size. Um, and as we look a little bit more closely uh, here in some of these cases, you can even see maybe a, a suggestion of some eosinophilic droplets uh, in some of these uh, cells. Uh, so this is one of those patterns that can be associated with yolk sac tumor. Um, and so uh, a diagnosis of a yolk sac tumor uh, as a possibility. Um, and uh, then, of course, uh, the surgeon tells you after the fact, well, yeah, she does have uh, an elevated AFP level. Uh, of course, it would be very valuable if that came uh, with the uh, intraoperative uh, information on the requisition, uh, but it doesn't always uh, happen that way. Uh, here's some more areas where you see some of these eosinophilic droplets that would be suggestive uh, on frozen section of a yolk sac uh, component. Well, the patient also had a bulky uh, uh, ovarian mass. We'll, we'll look here at the permanent sections here from this uh, tissue uh, here in the uh, omental area, and we can see more of this pattern of a uh, mixture of solid and lace-like uh, pattern growth. Um, and uh, this sort of uh, appearance here. You can see the eosinophilic droplets in some of the cells and uh, go along with that as well. Well, uh, the ovarian lesion was resected. It was bulky. It was a lot of areas of necrosis. Uh, and it seemed to have a couple of different patterns, which are nicely represented on this uh, slide in these two uh, uh, fragments of tissue. We'll look first here at the one on the left, uh, which shows a uh, uh, very cellular uh, tumor, um, some intervening cords of uh, tissue with scattered uh, lymphocytes. Uh, and we see these very nice, uh, large uh, malignant cells uh, 
fairly centrally placed nuclei, a little bit of frilly uh, cytoplasm in some areas, uh, and fairly prominent nucleoli. So admixed with these uh, lymphocytes here, our uh, leading diagnosis on the basis of this pattern would be dysgerminoma. Um, and then looking here at the opposite uh, uh, fragment here, we can see the alternate pattern, more similar to what we saw in the uh, omental tissue uh, with a uh, more uh, uniform cell pattern with uh, cleared cytoplasm, little uh, nested areas, uh, sieve-like areas, lace-like pattern, um, uh, and in areas uh, eosinophilic droplets uh, within the cytoplasm. Uh, now, of course, we did not see uh, classic schiller duvall bodies. Uh, those are only seen in about 20% of uh, ovarian uh, germ cell uh, uh, yolk sac tumors. Uh, so not finding them certainly does not exclude the diagnosis. Um, of course, in this situation, immunohistochemistry is uh, expected to be helpful. Um, and in this case, that's not an exception either. A couple of uh, nice immunostains uh, can illustrate uh, the differences here. Um, and here we see uh, the uh, uh, AFP stain. Uh, which is totally negative here in the, the dysgerminoma component, uh, but nicely lights up many of these cells uh, in the uh, uh, yolk sac component. Uh, and you may say this looks a little bit like edge staining, and perhaps that's true, um, but it is also in some of the cytoplasmic uh, secretions and certainly weakly positive in the cytoplasm of many of these cells as well. Uh, so we interpret that as a positive uh, stain. Uh, certainly not the uh, highest performing stain, of course. Um, and there are other things we'd like to see. Um, and so uh, here is uh, a nice immunohistochemical stain showing, showing uh, uh, positivity uh, on the yolk sac component uh, with uh, uh, this is PLAP. Uh, nice positivity in the cytoplasm of these cells, uh, and again, uh, total negativity uh, here in the uh, dysgerminoma component. Or maybe this is uh, keratin. I believe the keratin stain has a similar pattern. Yeah, so the keratin, that's a, that's a cytokeratin stain, 818, and here's our uh, PLAP stain, uh, which, uh, as, uh, is, as it should, highlights uh, nicely the dysgerminoma component uh, with this nice granular cytoplasmic positivity here, uh, while the uh, yolk sac uh, component is uh, largely negative here, as we see. Uh, so that uh, certainly goes a long ways to confirm the diagnosis. So uh, let's think about uh, serum markers relative to ovarian neoplasia, and particularly in these younger patients. I, I think there is a significant role for ser serum tumor markers in ovarian neoplasia. Um, and I'm going to exclude discussion of the screening markers, but uh, as a preoperative uh, assessment, um, routine drawing of, of many of these tumor markers uh, is, is certainly indicated uh, anytime one of these uh, diagnoses uh, is in the differential. So in young women, uh, an AFP, an HCG, a PLAP, an uh maybe even a chromogranin should be included, whereas you know, in a more mature older woman, you may want to go with other uh, markers, more inhibin or chromogranin possibly, uh, but not the uh, germ cell uh, markers, uh, you know, after about 35 or 40 years of age. Uh, and of course, if you know these values, then that uh, needs to drive uh, our morphologic evaluation to look for the components that may express that. So AFP can be expressed in yolk sac tumors, immature teratomas, or any Sertoli lighting component. HCG, uh, we should can be cons looking for a potentially syncytial trophoblast, either in dysgerminoma or in a choriocarcinoma. PLAP, of course, a marker for dysgerminoma. Inhibin for any of our uh, um, sex cord stromal tumors, granulosa cell Sertoli lighting, and chromogranin in the case of uh, potential uh, teratoma or struma carcinoid. So our final find-out diagnosis uh, in this case today is a mixed germ cell tumor with uh, dysgerminoma and yolk sac tumor. 
uh, stage 3B because it had bulky uh, extra pelvic disease. Um, and uh, we confirmed the frozen section uh, impression uh, with that uh, diagnosis. So uh, I hope that uh, that will help you in your evaluation, uh, both of tumor markers and thinking about how to deal with uh, these patients on frozen section uh, at various ages and times in their development. Um, and if you like this, please, uh, please leave us a comment. Uh, share it with your friends or colleagues who are in similar situations. And of course, we hope you'll hit that subscribe button so that uh, you'll catch uh, future releases from our channel which we hope will continue to function for uh, many, uh, many decades to come. So until next time, thanks so much for joining us.